are they if you super fast dry it, you're just going to burn the oils off and you don't get the full medical benefit that you do from a proper cure. But anyway, um, I, I saw it the other day, I had someone come into the store, who uh, a grower who has a, a problem knee and he's used to smoking his own pot all the time. And he comes into my store and I, I smoked him like four joints in half an hour and he couldn't feel his knee uh, going home. He drove and like, got back and he's like, wow, like, you know, I haven't, you know, it was hours after he'd smoked with me. But because he had a bunch of new sort of anti-inflammatories and such introduced at such a high dose, it was even the next day that he noticed that when he woke up, his knee wasn't as sore as normal. And well, that's because he had a session with me and puffed up. He normally would just kind of puff enough to maintain. And I strongly believe that it's the anti-inflammatory qualities that are of his benefit and of so many other people. And it's completely underestimated. People would you know, the, the intoxicating sort of pain-killing effects are what people often think about. Oh yeah, cannabis is medicine. Of course it is, you know, and I can barely feel my arms too, you know, like, it's something that, you know, is, is akin to, you know, alcohol in some sense for the, you know, the, the medical community, right? They just, you know, group it as an narcotic, right? And it's just, yeah, of course it's going to kill the pain, right? Because you're a chronic, like, you know, that's what they're programmed to think. But it's doing much more than that. And the anti-inflammatory benefits are really critical um, to all, a whole wide range of problems. Like you think right away, okay, well sure, the guy with the bad knee from rugby, well yeah, like, you know, you've got to have anti-inflammatories in there, you know, morning, noon, and night. And the more you do that, the more you're uh, avoiding being actually in real pain. Because a lot of the time people get in pain is when they've gone with, without cannabis or anti-inflammatories for a while. And I've seen it before, that's why we started doing deliveries up island last year, because there'd be people going without medicine over the winter because they didn't want to drive down here and they'd get worse and worse and worse to the point where it's like, okay, I don't care if I'm gonna die on the highway, I'm gonna drive to Victoria to get medicine. And that's because the inflammation is getting worse and worse and worse. That's the, the deciding factor. And there's a lot of people with not just chronic pain from different injuries, but like arthritis, fibromyalgia, um, you know, just about any sort of, you know, physical kind of pain issue, the anti-inflammatory benefits are, are huge. But it's not just that. Your gastrointestinal system uh, is a really sensitive uh, part of your body. And I know a lot of people with, uh, and, and there are some in this room, with irritable bowel syndrome. And that's, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. That's inflammation of the bowels. That is what that medical problem is, is, is simply that. And, um, it's one of the reasons that, that we're going to stress in our court case is so important to, to actually press out the fiber because uh, you, know, you, you need to have the oils and cannabinoids introduced to your stomach, but you, the fibers and cannabis are actually really strong. So if you don't do that, then uh, you're gonna get a, a good shit. So if, you, you know, if you're constipated, it's not a bad thing, but for most people, you know, your intestines are something that you really want to protect and, and you wouldn't want to subject yourself to that every day without a damn good reason. And so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, there's a, you know, uh, you know, Crohn's disease as well. There's a number of, not just with your uh, digestive system, but, you know, internal organs, you know, like, uh, uh, Gail can feel it when her liver is swollen and eating cannabis helps take that inflammation down, uh, you know, you're, your kidneys, your, uh, uh, all, not, uh, all, all sorts of different parts of your digestive system, um, you know, the, the problems are magnified. They might not be, you know, the result of the inflammation, but, you know, it's something when things go wrong in your tummy, one of the first things that it do is start to swell up and be inflamed. Um, your mouth as well. We uh, have lozenges that are close, um, that, uh, the cannabis, when it's uh, absorbed into your mouth, for one, you absorb, you avoid your stomach and your liver, which is uh, um, a process that breaks it down a little quicker. So, um, but you also, if you've got teeth problems, you know, we use our lozenges with people that have got inflamed teeth, and uh, you know, the antibiotic qualities will help kill the infection. The anti-inflammatory benefits will help 
ease the swelling, the pain killing benefits, help numb the sensations. Uh, it's really quite amazing if you've ever had a tooth problem to go through everything that they can offer you and like, oh sure, you can take their, their narcotic drugs, which uh, some of us uh, don't, don't like as much as others. Uh, but uh, you know, using uh, our, our products have really helped people with a wide range of tooth problems. Uh, glaucoma as well and, and other problems of the eye are essentially you know, swollen valves where fluids are just uh, not able to uh, you know, come and go as, as they should. And my understanding of glaucoma is that the you know, in, inocular eye pressure builds up to the point where it swells and, and you can't see um, or see as well as you should. And the cannabinoids present in the cannabis plant bring down that sort of swelling and inflammation in the eyeball. There's actually a bunch of really weird eye problems. I don't pretend to know them all. But um, being in our club, like I got 3,400 sick people that have come to our door and they don't all fit this like, oh, here's this 18 conditions that cannabis is good for. I've heard some of the strangest stuff in the world that people come in and go, oh, cannabis helps me with ringing in the ear. Right? Well, I don't know what ringing in the ear is. I, I can't, I won't pretend. Tonight. Okay, well, tinnitus, okay. I wasn't going <laughs> to try to say it, but that's the that, right, tinnitus. But um, I would bet that it's got something to do with, with the swelling and the reason that cannabis helps isn't just because it numbs the pain, but because it sort of brings down the swelling there. One of the more interesting areas of science that sort of the, the grandfather of this uh, uh, research who's discovered THC, the receptors, anandamide, and, and, and such, Dr. Raphael McCoolin, probably didn't spell it right again or say it right, but he's working in the Hebrew University uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, some <coughs> uh, papers just came out about him on the weekend. Um, they're doing research with uh, a form of uh, THC, I think. I think it's, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's been plant extracted or what, um, but they've been working for years getting this into the brains of people that have been injured in car accidents. Because if you're in a car accident, one of the, or, or a head injury in general, right? This is one of the other reasons, yeah, we've got a lot of people with head injuries in our club, and I believe that, again, it's the anti-inflammatory benefits that are literally reducing the swelling of their brain uh, that you know, will not only numb the, the pain that they're in, but also, you know, a lot of other issues that, that seem to become complicated when your, your head's hurting all the time. Um, but yeah, a lot of uh, uh, on or permanent pain is, is nerve damage that occurs because of swelling that never gets to heal itself. And so, uh, Dr. McCoolin actually is injecting THC like into people's uh, the backs of their heads, like to get it right into their central nervous system, like as soon as possible after an accident. So they're getting people that are coming in from car accidents and stuff, and uh, um, you know I'm not sure all the you know technicalities for getting permission to do these things, but my understanding is is that they've been having great results. You know if the faster they get that THC into a person's brain, the more they can reduce the swelling and the faster and uh, people can recover and, and the, the, you know, the recovery rates are quite you know, greater. So, uh, you know, um, however they're able to get permission fast to do those things, I don't care. Um, it would be, uh, um, I think, uh, a, a, a great benefit to, to do this research. It makes sense to me that uh, um, it, it would work from everything that I've understood and that's what the research is showing. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, the, the medicinal uses of cannabis for the most part um, are understood anecdotally, um, but the research, honestly, um, while there is some and you know, more than enough to prove uh, that it's good medicine, in my opinion, the research has been both lacking and often flawed. The research that hasn't been done, very, very little of it, is on you know, whole plant extracts and, and medicine as an edible and as a topical as well. I didn't even get into that. Next semester, uh, 
one of us will do the uh, products uh, uh, lesson. We go through all the different products that we make at the Cannabis Buyers Club. But cannabis is also an antibiotic, antifungal, antioxidant. When you apply it on the skin, and when you cook it into an olive oil in particular, which is really great for your skin, um, as opposed to, say, an alcohol. And this is, uh, to me, a really important distinction. Like, like I say, you can make cannabis medicines out of almost anything. And a lot of people of this day and age want to make these extracts out of various alcohols and get some high concentration to smoke. That's really important for a lot of people. Well, uh, not so much for me, and, and certainly when you think of it topically, um, the idea of applying the alcohol to your skin uh, where it evaporates and, and is the, leaves the cannabinoids on the surface of your skin really doesn't make much sense as opposed to the olive oil which absorbs right into the skin cells. That's why people in, in Greece and that part of the world are so healthy because they just they eat it, they bathe in it, they just, they're, they're absorbing this, this olive oil which is just really, really good for their skin. I should say not so healthy, but their skin is very, very healthy. Well, that's, uh, and, and so uh, the reason that we make our skin products using the extra virgin olive oil is because it will absorb right into the skin, or sorry, the cells, not just on the surface. And then it will break down inside so that the cannabinoids uh, are totally stable and not left on the surface. Which again, as an edible product is, uh, well, you know, you're, if you eat a, an oil form, it's, you know, it's, you know, not bad for you, but, uh, you know, it's something that's really, you know, uh, a lot of it's speculative as well. You know, like I would love to see the research on, you know, the uh, different uh, uh, differences between, you know, eating alcohol extracts as opposed to eating cannabis extracts. But, you know, the research, like I say, is, is quite limited. We'd love to do more, more ourselves on the edibles in particular. Um, there's uh, more and more studies coming out on, on the smoked cannabis. Um, but uh, we really strongly believe at our club that uh, eating cannabis is, is far more uh, beneficial, economical, and uh, in the long run, just uh, better medicine. Um, and I didn't even really try to list all the different conditions, um, but in an odd way, uh, it would be a lot easier for me to list the medical problems that I think it doesn't work for as well <laughs> because I don't know of a single serious permanent physical disability or disease that someone hasn't found relief really for it works for it. Um, you know, there's some mental health issues or people with you know different sort of what they might call chemical imbalances and, and such um, that it might not be useful for but whether it's reducing tremors for multiple sclerosis or uh, um, I was going to try to name some weird ones, but uh, I, I shouldn't embarrass myself. Um, but uh, it's an amazing plant because it does touch upon all these various issues, and we've really barely scratched the surface because most sick people have never had access to good cookies or other good topical <coughs> skin products. Most of them have heard of it, used as a skin product. We here in Victoria, as far as I know, are still one of the only groups in the world that provide skin products made of this plant. Um, they're starting to in Vancouver, so I shouldn't say that, um, but uh, I think a lot of that's going to hemp too. Anyway, um, it needs to happen uh, a lot more than it is now, um, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, next week we'll talk about why not, because Health Canada has brought in uh, medical marijuana access regulations, and it's been 10 years since uh, they were told to go and do this and it's been a complete fiasco. Uh, I was sort of late getting ready here because of another person I know that uh, had a designated grower go sideways on them. And otherwise, uh, if you want to get an understanding as to why, despite the fact that it helps all these problems, we haven't progressed very far, uh, I guess that's next week's lecture. So thanks everybody for coming up.